All right. Welcome to another Friday night episode of Keto Rocks. I'm Jim Hobbs, and to my left or right is my carnivore co-host, Brian Damage Foresight of the band Kicks and Rhino Bucket. And we're here with another show with just the two of us. And of course, we'll bring on uh, Mr. Shanker later on to give you those meat deals of the week. But how's your week going, Brian? Well, it's going. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's one of those weeks that's leading up to a, a gig. So uh, yeah, I'm just trying to take care of loose ends and but, you know, it, it's actually kind of cool this week. I got a new laptop. I got yesterday, I got new tires for my car. So it's a, it's a week of new things. <laughs> cool. I heard you may have some new floor space in your house after a, a visit you got from a mutual friend. No, I didn't get a visit. Oh, you just shipped it? No, it got, the, the visit got canceled. <laughs> oh, okay. All so, right. Uh, so yeah, that'll happen in a future uh, future time. Okay, okay. Well, let's talk about the. I know last week when we were recording, you were having last two weeks have been really uh, hard on your internet connectivity, and you were going to call the cable company. So did that get taken care of? Yes, they sent a couple guys out, <laughs> and uh, it was actually pretty cool. They sent them out the same day. I, I inquired about it in the morning and, and the, the guys were out here in the evening and um, you know, like everything else, they come in and well, they, they went out around the outside and checked my junction box and all that. And um, it did, it did turn out that I had, um, they, they had indoor fixtures on my junction box. So they changed them to all weather fixtures because that, that box doesn't quite close right. So, and it rains a lot here. So it's probably always getting wet. And, uh, but they didn't really have an answer for why it was slow, except for that. I think it was my laptop because uh, my phone and my iPad were fine. But, you know, I'm always suspicious, especially of like cable companies and those, because I, I went through this out in California with AT&T and my, my internet out there. They would like every other week I was calling somebody up and they'd send somebody out. And every time they'd have a different reason why it wasn't working. And it, it wouldn't like, wouldn't even be related to the, the other person that told me it was, you know, it was like their personal opinion, I think. But uh, so I'm always suspicious. Like they were, they came inside, they wanted to see my, my, my router and all that. And uh so he's testing the speed on his phone and he's like, oh, it was way up. Like my laptop was registering um, like maybe like 46, between 46 and 92 or something speed. And I'm paying, I'm paying for 600, I think. <laughs> so it's a little bit below what you're paying for. <laughs> right. So anyway, they check it on their phone and it was up in the 500s. You know, so it's like, oh, no, it's working. So I'm thinking, yeah, what are they doing? Like, like, are they just showing me some number and making me feel better? And then they're going to, this was after they fixed the junction box. So they're, so it's like, you know, uh, after they leave, is it going to just drop off again? <laughs> but it didn't, it, it's working. Well, I think it was, it was my laptop. Well, you know, the thing that just didn't make sense to me was you had just called in almost at the same time you started having issues was when you canceled the the cable side the tv side of your agreement so it just was you know very coincidental and timely all, all of a sudden you started having internet problems when that went down yeah i know <laughs> so i can understand your skepticism um in regards to the cable company i'm sure everybody out there who is has to deal with their local cable company has also experienced uh, those type of issues uh, at least they have here in the uh, Northern Virginia area. I can tell you that much. Yeah, I've never heard anything good about a cable company. <laughs> you know, but I'm thankful for them because, I mean, they do provide a service. And if you can get the internet at one gig or 600 megabytes, um, it, you know, it does provide you a gateway to the world. So for that, we're thankful for them. So yeah. We'll be <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be lost without it. So <laughs> Absolutely. Talking about lost without it. I don't know why TV shows and things start really pointing to 
to something that we rarely talk about. And you posted about it, Dr. Barry posted about it, but it's about the food that we feed our children. Oh yeah. So, you know, Brian, why don't you, I don't mean just to th throw you to the, uh, to the world, but can you share with everybody that the Dr. Ken Barry uh, podcast or article in regards to cereal and, and what it really is and, and why we shouldn't serve it to our children? Yeah, it, it's, um, you know, it's like the, the FDA is pushing this uh, cereal thing on kids. And, and uh, I mean, oh, and this is the other thing. I, I Let, let me um, pull this up so I can share the link. I, I, I listened to this podcast that has to do with this exact same thing. It, it was on um, this, this uh, carnivore guy that I... I follow on on uh, Instagram, but the the doctor is Dr. Joan Ifland, and uh, he did a podcast with her, and she's an ad addiction, like a food addiction specialist, and she went deep into that whole the thing with the FDA and how they're paid off, and uh, you know, and how this the whole food industry it's it's weird it's it's all based well like everything it's based on profits and it, it she and i've heard this before but but she reminded me that back in the early 80s when the tobacco companies were starting to struggle remember when they came down on the tobacco companies for that camel cartoon thing because it right. it turns it was enticing out that, children it was turning it's enticing children to smoke Right. And that's exactly what it was. They, they, it was aimed at like 10 year olds and up and, and uh, it was just a marketing campaign. And, and the, 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 I can't even talk today, the tobacco industry, you know, they had that whole addiction thing down. Like they snuck in extra nicotine and did all these things and chemicals that would addict you to the, their product. And, uh, so when when they cracked down on that the cartoon thing, I, I you know obviously it hurt their sales, and, and you know the whole thing about cigarettes causing cancer and all that came out. It, you know they couldn't hide it anymore, and they were being sued. And so it turns out that these big tobacco companies bought these food companies. So now all the big food companies are owned by. The like Marlboro or the, the big to the Reynolds, the big tobacco companies. Yeah, yeah. And uh so so now they've taken those same the same uh tactics and applied it to the food industry. So that's when high fructose corn syrup was introduced because it's highly, highly addicting. And they put that in everything. And they had they, you know, they had their scientists that come up with the magic combination that 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 fat sugar, that fat sugar that just that literally causes your brain to be addicted to that combo yeah yeah so so that that it was all part of the plan i mean it's it, it sounds like this big conspiracy th theory but it's not it, and uh it was all just to get people addicted and to sell more because the more you eat that stuff the more you want that stuff and the more you crave that stuff and the more you buy it and the more money they make. So, you know, and, and the thing is with the cigarettes, it was from 10 year olds up, but with food, they can, they can target infants, right. which they have. So they get them, they get infants. Well, actually they get the mother addicted first and then she passes it on to the infant and, you know, they're addicted for life from the beginning. So it's, it's just a big it's horrible. And, and cereals are the, like one of the worst offenders. And you always hear the people saying, well, at least eat oatmeal. That's better. But no, it's not. It's not better, especially the instant oatmeals. I mean, obviously those are worse because it, it's most sugar. But uh, oh, yeah, it's frustrating. You know, you see this stuff and people defend it. I mean, they're, they're, they get defensive when you, when you, <laughs> tell them that their cereal is bad for them <laughs> and their milk that they put in the cereal, especially skim milk. It's like the worst, but uh, 
yeah, so this, let me, let me see if I can uh, find the, um, the name of this podcast. I mean, she's, she's got a bunch of different podcasts. Like this is the only one I, I've listened to so far, but it was a really good introduction. Let me see. Here you go. said her name is Dr. Dr. Jones, or is it another doctor? Uh, Joan Ifland. So it's I-F-L-A-N-D is her last name. Okay, in the, in the, the podcast, it's on YouTube, but it's... Um, we'll, we'll post it up here on the, on the screen so people can go to it and put in the show notes too. Yeah. It, it, but the, the title is Processed Food Addiction, Why, How, and What We Can Do About It. And she explained, I mean, she goes through all kinds of cool, it was a really good podcast. Well, you know, one of the things that the book that you and I have uh, shared in reading, the uh, one from Dr., what's her name, Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride on the uh, gut oh, syndrome. Yeah. You know, I, I was rereading that earlier and, you know, for whatever reason, I just keep seeing, I mean, sh show after show keeps pointing back to us as parents and what we feed our kids and teaching them, we have to be the one that teaches them that food is fuel for the body and that we eat to make the body stronger and not make the body weaker. And, you know, it's, it's amazing. You know, I know when I was growing up, parents always taught young kids, especially when you're, you know, five, six, seven, you start to go outside and play, they would tell you, don't speak to strangers. Mm -hmm. And the reality of it is, I started thinking about that, but our parents don't take the same advice, you know, and I'm, I'm guilty of it too, up until, you know, the last 10 years of my life. But when we start following strangers advice, most people we don't even real, don't even know, let's just be honest, we don't know people who are following and and those doctors are following what they've been taught that we go see in person. So we may know a, a physician, a pediatrician, but the reality of it is processed foods are so horrifically bad for our gut. And in and, and reading her book, she flat out says this, sugar and anything that contains it, sugar is the perfect food for pathogenic microbes in the gut. Now, you may say, well, that's good. No, there can be no healing in the digestive system or anywhere else in the body without complete avoidance of sugar. So, and then she goes on to talk about processed food. And so do we live in an era of convenience food, um, which also means we live in an era of processed foods. And, yeah. you know, as a kid, listen, I eat cereal. I've talked about that many times in the show. Um, even as an adult, I eat cereal because it's very easy. You know, you grab a box, you dump it in a bowl, you pour your skim milk or milk on it. And it and, tastes good. <laughs> and it tastes great, right? It's like, hey, and, and yet on it's the like box. Dessert. It's like dessert for breakfast. Yeah, it's like eating, uh, uh, and, and, you know, as a child, you they did another thing that was, you know, enticing kids to buy that box of cereal was they had a, a prize or a, it's like a Cracker Jack, popcorn Cracker Jack. You had a prize inside your cereal. I remember... Well, I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna find this prize and I dump it all in a big bowl so I could find my uh, tattoo or whatever stupid little gift they thrown in there. Um, yeah, that the um the, that on that podcast she she talks about that too the marketing and how you know the cereal boxes with the bright colors and the cartoon characters and it's all designed so the kid goes oh I want that you know I mean you got Lucky Charms you got the rabbit you got tricks are for kids you got you got all these colorful features or Count Dracula or Captain Crunch. They're all cartoon characters enticing kids to, to want to pick. So they're getting introduced to exactly the food that we don't want them in, introduced to, all because of the marketing, not because of the results you see from eating that type of food gives you because the results are not good. They're not okay. in your favor. Um, they're, well, compromise, they're compromising your your uh, ability to fight off disease go ahead brian well yeah getting back to the the marketing too you, you got to listen that that is the best podcast it's like more stuff's coming back to me now but she was talking about um that's the other thing when when um when the cigarette companies took over the food companies you know because they they were banned from 
uh, TV commercials. Like, so, so they were unable to use that, that part of their, for their, their marketing. So when they got into the food business, they just jumped all over that. And, they, and, you know, those companies have so much money. And she said, I forget what the numbers are, the amount of commercials that were targeted at kids for like, you know, breakfast foods and that kind of, and snacks, it, it went up to like some outrageous number, like they just bumped it up, like, you know, and kids are, you, you sit there and it, and it gets ingrained and, and she's talking about the, the addictive process of the brain and that's part of it. it. You know, if you get bombarded over and over with something, it gets embedded in there, you know? Yeah, I, I think it's a huge issue right now. I mean, if you look at our, our, at our, at our country and our society as a whole, you see kids, obesity, diabetics, uh, diabetes, you see uh, fatty liver, fatty liver uh, for kids, non non alcoholic fatty liver disease. And you know that didn't even exist uh, uh, until recently. That it, fatty liver was always associated with alcoholism, and right. now it's it's not. It's it's like there's more non alcoholic fatty liver than there is alcoholic fatty liver in in the country. It's just a pandemic. I mean, that's this is truly a, an epidemic of of the companies that are marketing this food like if you know what happened to the cigarette companies where they had to put labels or had a limit where they market their product like there's no more commercials with, which used to be bombarded by um and i think i could be wrong but i think you know you're not even allowed to smoke on tv or at least you weren't allowed to smoke on TV. maybe you are allowed to smoke on tv but i know they were they for a while there they were trying to be very cautious i know you could advertise um on tv anymore but also alcohol commercials, you don't see those either. Yeah. So they used to, so that warning label that got put on all tobacco products, whether it was cigarettes or chewing tobacco, um, those type of labels need to be put on cereal boxes. So you as the parent can educate your children when they like the colorful cartoon character and all their friends at school are eating it. Um, and that's a whole nother thing because at school they serve that. And even make it matters worse. And this is this is where I want everybody to really take a time out and pause and, and reflect. You know, Brian says it all the time with it's all comes back down to profits, but it's so sad to see hospitals feeding their patients, especially ones who are dealing with cancer related issues, feeding them sugar, cereal, oatmeal. Those are choices that they're actually providing to their patients that are supposed to be there to help them and, uh, get well. And those insure drinks that are just full of high fructose corn syrup. Oh man, it's just, it's criminal, but that's it. Cause it's cheap. All that junk is cheap so they can make more money. You know, they don't want to spend the money on, on real food. Right. And here's the thing, you know, you may be saying, well, how do we, how do we fight this? Well, you fight this by, first of all, you being the parent of your children and your health like you have to take that power back from the powers to be because those powers to be have been corrupted by the system in itself to be able to profit and you are not profiting they're profiting at your expense and when your expense is your own health and your children's health and so you know, I don't say this to beat parents up. I'm just saying we have fallen prey to a system that's not intended to help us and grow healthy and strong. It helps us to become weaker and dependent on the drugs that they want to prescribe to us in order for us to keep coming back to them because we believe and have been programmed to believe they are our only solution when the solution really is, Mother Nature gave us all the food that we need to eat. Eggs being one that's like, you can't have a better natural food without you. You don't have to process it. You just got to eat it. It doesn't matter how you eat it. You want to sit there and have um, boiled eggs, soft boiled eggs, hard boiled eggs, eggs over easy, scrambled eggs. Or, or raw. Or raw. Or raw eggs. Do it like Rocky. Bust those eggs in the blender, <laughs> blend it up. Yeah, what you know, you notice too, uh, 
you know, they can't have the, the cigarette commercials or all that stuff now. But now, like in the evenings, it's all drug commercials. So it's all the pharmaceutical companies bombarding the adults, making them think that that's what you have to do to be well. You have to take this pill and this, that. And it's all about, you know, fixing it from the outside. And, and really, it's about fixing it from the inside. You know, you got these pharmaceutical companies just bombarding you with these commercials. And yeah, and that's the, that's the American way, you know, you have something that goes wrong, you take a pill for it. But the, the thing is, the reason it went wrong, you know, they're not looking at the cause. Uh, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's completely upside down. And, you know, and pharmaceutical companies have taken the place of tobacco and those tobacco companies, as far yeah. as the commercials and all that. Well, you could even, you know, you're talking about these larger conglomerates, these tobacco companies, they, they're the ones that bought in and took over the, the, the cereal, bought up the cereal companies, but they bought up the, the beverage companies as well. Oh, and yeah. Cross- oh. Yeah, that's a, that. Oh, you're reminding me of all these things that came up. Yo, that, share. You know, they, they outlawed the cigarette machines because kids could access those. Right. So what they did, like in the office buildings and stuff, they replace the cigarette machine with snack machines and soda machines. Same wow. thing, just a different thing. <laughs> yeah, they don't, they don't care how they make their money as long as yeah. they make their money. So they're going to peddle you something that's not good for you. Because they got to keep it in front of you so you can't forget. You know, right. there's, there's the Coke machine, there's the snack machine. You know, it's just, you're just bombarded from from the time you wake up till you go to sleep (laughs) yeah you you know you're you're talking about these large companies and how they know how our brains work and and they do a ton of money in research and like they found out that the colors red and yellow cause it triggers your body to get hungry they want to eat so if you look at mcdonald's burger king wendy's arby's you look at they all have red and yellow in their color schemes and that's because when you see those colors it triggers your body to want to eat food. So when you're driving by and you see those, they know subconsciously it's going to cause you to be hungry. And if you ever wonder why there's so many fast food restaurants, because you may pass one, but you may stop at the next one because now you're like, you know what? I got to eat something. I'm home. And you may not even know why, but subconsciously they know why. And, and they, they actually bring you back in. And just like, you know, talking about the, the cereal cartoon characters well you know you got ronald mcdonald's a clown you got well the burger king guy he's a little bit scary i don't care if you're a child or not that guy just gives me the creeps uh, <laughs> and uh but i mean i guess kids love them it causes them to stop i don't know what wendy's has other than the, uh, the girl with the pigtails the pigtails yes uh, and what was the owner what was the father who founded that thomas something thomas i believe the founder of wendy's i don't know um, and Wendy's was named after his daughter who did have those pigtails. But, you know, if you start to take time and start to do your research and start looking, you'll realize that they're just marketing to your addictive personality. And you're and, falling for it. <laughs> yeah. And we're, and we've, look, I fell for it for most of my life. Oh, yeah. And that's why, you know, I fell for it. But the reality of it is, you know, at some point, once you break free, you can't go back to, 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 to that lifestyle that they're trying to, uh, corrupt you and your thinking so you know one of the things how can we work collectively you know i think we got to start reaching out to our uh, local officials our our representatives in congress the senate and we got to start hey listen there needs to be warning labels on this cereal because this cereal is toxic and poisoning Uh, you know more kids now have are labeled with adhd or add or hyper and they're going to their psychologists or therapists and, and being given adult, 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 what is it? Adult? Uh, adult, is adult. It is? I don't know. I don't know the names of the drugs, but yeah. I, and all that is, is it's carbon sugar overdose. It's, it, and they put, just throw a pill on it and then let the kid keep eating the carbs and the sugar. It's just crazy. It, it really is crazy. And to think that when we go to a hospital, you know, you would think that you're going to a place that's going to put you in a, an environment of providing you those healthy foods. 
but they don't. They provide you the process food, the same process crap that you get on the outside of the hospital. They do on the inside. So, you know, you don't go to your, if you're trying to get off drugs, you don't go to the drug dealer's house and let them push the drugs to you. And not only are they pushing them to you, you're talking about a profit margin. If you even say, you know, I don't want any food, they'll charge you $75 for special diet. That's how, that's how profitable they make everything, even when you don't have anything. Yeah. So it's, it's crazy. crazy. So, you know, what can we do? You know, you heard Brian, you know, confess that he doesn't have health insurance, but why in the world are you going to pay a, a entity, you know, a thousand dollars a month, have a huge 12 or $14,000 annual deductible to go see a doctor who's going to tell the way, tell Brian the way he's eating is not the way you should be eating and, and pay them for that. It just doesn't make sense when Brian is like one of the few lucky ones who've come to the realization that his health is dependent on what he puts in his mouth and digests on a daily basis. And he knows when he goes with one ingredient foods, AKA steak or a vegetable every now and then, eggs, you know, anything that mother nature provided for us to eat that we don't have to, uh, that hasn't gone through the process cycle that you're just going straight from farm to, to table to your stomach. Um, it's healthy for us. Um, but even, even in that cycle, you got to be even more careful because, you know, we were talking about a couple of weeks when we had uh, the meatologist Dennis on with that meat glue. So you even, you know, they'll even try to, to, to even mess with that system. So you got to be careful out there and what you're digesting and what you're purchasing. And you really want to stay clear of processed foods, especially if you're suffering from any type of uh, intestinal disease, or you find yourself, you know, having diarrhea or IBS or any, almost all your health related issues stem from your digest, digestive system and your gut. Um, mm -hmm. and, and once you understand that, then you realize how important it is for you to feed it the right foods that it needs to be able to strengthen itself and to nourish every cell of your body. And not only does it do that, it puts you in a, a, a better frame of, of mind, um, which just allows you to enjoy life. It allows you to maximize everything that life has to offer instead of always being sick. I mean, don't be one of these people when you turn 60 years old that your, your weekly routine is, oh, I've got to go see this doctor. I got to go see this doctor's. And you get together with your other friends at the uh, parties or Roy Rogers or McDonald's and you guys have your coffee talk and have your breakfast sandwiches. And you're like, yeah, I got to go to the doctor tomorrow. And, and your whole life resolves around, revolves around going to go see a doctor. Um, yeah, and, and it's blamed on, oh, I'm just getting old, but you don't have to get old. No. If you, if you take care of yourself, your your body will keep going like it's supposed to, you know? But uh, yeah, it's crazy. You said something uh, a second ago, I was going to comment on it. Uh, I can't remember now. <laughs> well, it'll come to you if he does this, this pipe up and share. But you know, that Dr. Natalia, she talks about that that nature made food for us. And when we start tampering with natural foods that we start getting into trouble, any processed food changes the food's chemical and biological structure. And our bodies were not designed to break down that chemically altered food. It's yeah. meant to, it's meant to break down the food as nature intended it to be. And, uh, you know, one of the cheapest foods, I know prices are going through the roof lately, um, as a matter of fact, we were down at Peggy and I went down to Colonial Beach on this past Sunday to go down to Dockside, and we usually go sit out there and have uh, 20, 20 chicken wings because their chi chicken wings are not battered and they have them with Old Bay. And their normal price is, I think you can get a, a, a 10 wing pack for, I don't know, $11.99 and, and a 20 wing platter for $19.99. So, but we went down this past Sunday and they said, oh, hey, the pricing has changed on our wings. They've tripled in price. So now you can get 10 wings for $24.99 because their price of purchasing the wings is literally tripled, she said. We have to pay three times as much as we were over the summer. And it just doesn't make any sense that all of a sudden we have this shortage of chicken wings 
but you can go to a Costco and get a whole chicken still for four ninety nine. It's just, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. But I say all that for we have to start planning for our lives. And so if you can find a, a local farm near you or a local way for you to obtain a half a cow or a cow or buy fresh meats and uh, or if you have land to be able to have your own cattle and grow your own food, that's what you should do. But we have to. We literally have to stop poisoning our body uh, with the convenience food that's been peddled and marketed to us since we were kids. And we definitely have to break the cycle of it being peddled to our kids. I mean, we truly owe it to the next generation to give them the best chance of, of growing strong and maximizing their opportunities and having a, a fulfilled life with little uh, disease or illnesses by having a strong immune system. But uh, we have to stop. We have to sit there and call th these people out who are, are, who are marketing these foods to us, including the medical profession, hospitals, um, who are serving this crap. You know, we need to go to the hospital administrator and go, I want to know why you're serving your patients cereal and oatmeal when it's been shown in, 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 in recent studies just how terrible it is on our bodies. And, and don't give me those bought, prepaid bought uh, uh, labs or not labs, uh, studies that were done in the 50s, the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s that was paid for by the by the crooks that were uh, that the crooks are, for their own for their own product that they're peddling they're the ones paying for the uh, for the studies to show you that the stuff they're peddling is so called healthy for you when the reality of it is the opposite is true. Yeah, it's just more marketing. That's all that is. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, it's anyway. crazy. Yeah, it is. So we'll put that uh, link to that. Uh, podcast that Brian uh, watched so you guys can take some time and watch that in the meantime you know it's truly start reaching out to your local elective officials and you know call up your hospitals and let them know listen I I don't understand why you guys are you know serving your patient or ask them don't just accuse them ask them you know what foods do you offer patients that may be in your hospital due to diabetes or going through cancer recovery um, and let them tell you and then ask them, why are you serving that crap? Um, well, there, there's other factors involved, too, as far uh, um, including, you know, funding and all that, you know, they they're funded by, you know, their funding. They have to go by guidelines and, you know, the diet and all that stuff's all in there. Like if they go out of the the, the parameters, then their funding gets cut off, you know. Same with a doctor. I mean, it's the same process that the doctors go through when, you know, they see a patient, they have to go by the guidelines. They, it's, you know, it's like diagnose and prescribe, you know, it's, they, and if they go out of that, those lines, they get in trouble. And, and I, I think it, the same, you know, it's, it applies to the, the diet at the hospitals. And because there, I've even seen it, you know, in some of these groups that I belong to on Facebook, where, uh, you know, a nurse that works at a hospital will be just horrified <laughs> by what the, what they're serving, but they're, you know, they can't do anything about it. I mean, I guess the only solution really is, I think, you know, uh, somebody else commented on one of these posts about the food, uh, hospital food, that they had been in the hospital. And I guess it's probably way more expensive, but they actually ordered you know just like for breakfast they would just from the cafeteria they would order like eggs bacon and sausage or something like that right you know just just the basics and and skip all that other stuff but um you know not everybody can afford to do that especially if you're in the hospital already yeah i'm reading through the book as you're talking because she also goes into breakfast cereals here i'm just reading that they're supposed to be healthy aren't they that is what numerous TV advertisements tell us. Unfortunately, the truth is just the opposite. Breakfast cereals are highly processed carbohydrates, full of sugar, salt, and other unhealthy substance. A bowl of breakfast cereal will start your day or your child's day with the first round of the blood sugar roller coaster, bringing a plethora of unpleasant symptoms. You know, being a great source of processed carbohydrates, breakfast cereals feed pathogenic bacteria and fungi in the gut, allowing them to produce a new portion of their toxins 
perpetrating the vicious cycle of gaps. So, you know, parents love you. I know you guys love your children and I love my children, but I fed them cereal because I didn't know any better. But if you're watching this, you now know better. And so we have to do better uh, and, and, and getting them to eat the food that's going to give them the best shot. You know, some, some kids, you know, are not able to even comprehend what's being taught to them in school because they're so hyped up on that processed food or they're feeling so bad and or, or you know, falling asleep. <laughs> yeah. Because you know, you're crash. crashing. Yeah. From, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're crashing from, from, from the sugar high. And, uh, you know, you may get mad at your, your son or daughter cause they're not, you're getting good grades, but you know, their good grades or bad grades could be coming from their diet. And yeah. you know, one of the things, one of the things that this Dr. Natasha says, you know, rarely does someone ever look at your diet to find out why you're in the mess that you're in. And it's just, it's just, it's just scooted over. It's just covered mm -hmm. over when the reality of it, that should be the first question that we ask anybody. You should be asking yourself that question. If you have an issue, there's something going on, whether you, you know, uh, you're feeling bad, you got a flu, you got a fever, you're aching, um, you got diarrhea, you got a headache, you don't have energy, you need to be going back and what did I feed my body the last 30 days, to, you know, 10 days, five days, what did I have this morning? And so you're not putting yourself in such a vulnerable position to get sick. Yeah, well, getting back to kids too, uh, you know, that's when their bodies are developing when they're young. And you know, the, the diets, you know, the, the, the American way of eating is it's, uh, you know, nutritionally void <laughs> and, you know, now, and now you got, you know, you got, uh, you know, the politics come into it too, which is another shame it, it, that shouldn't be involved. Like in New York, you know, now they have meatless Mondays and they have vegan Fridays. And it's like, these kids need food fat and protein for their brains. That's the other thing. You're starting right. your brain. Um, and, and then they're made to think that meat is bad. It's good to not eat meat, but it's really unhealthy. I mean, there, there is, you know, not to say somebody that's vegan is wrong. You know, if that's their choice, then there, there's ways about going about doing it that are better than other ways. But ultimately, <laughs> you know, for a, a human body to develop and their the brain to, to operate on its, you know, the most optimal fuel, um, you know, meat is the, you know, meat and protein and fat are the best things for that. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think uh, my brother, Steve Conover posted in the uh, keto page that if, if meat's so bad or tastes so bad, then uh, why are vegans trying to, or, or vegetarians trying to, uh, to imitate it through their plant protein uh, right. process and making, you know, serving sausage and hamburgers and hot dogs that are made from plant protein. If, if they're trying to get away from meat, um, and the if, reality, if, the re and if, you're, if you're eating imitation food, then you're getting in imitation nutrition. Exactly. And, and that's one of the things that she says in this book, the more processed the food is, and that's a highly processed um, system in making the plant-based food, all the nutrients and, and the mixture and through the processes are lost. So you're really just eating a shell of, of the, that, that gives your, your body thinking that you're eating meat or safe meat. Uh, but the Go ahead, yeah, Brian. It, it's, it's a reasonable, a reasonable facsimile. It's, it's, it's uh, similar to a copy machine. Yeah. You're, you're not getting the real thing. And, and so think about this, regardless of which side of the fence you're on, whether you're a vegan, a vegetarian, or a carnivore, or just a sad uh, standard American diet participant, the reality of it is they're marketing to all of us in the hopes, they, like I said, they don't care where they get the money. They know the processed food is bad for you. So they know if they can get the vegan's dollar, you're still going to go to the doctor because that stuff's going to make you sick. They know if they can get you off into the sugar world or the processed world, if you're a, uh, uh, if you participate in the standard American diet, it's both roads are going to lead you to them. And uh, 
that's really where they want you to end up is into a doctor's office. So they're um, minions who have been programmed to dispense drugs when you walk through their doors will dispense you the drugs. And if they don't dispense the drugs, then as Brian said, they have a chance of being uh, insurance decides as well. We're just not going to be able to uh, let you accept our type of insurance or they get in trouble or they can be suspended or put on probation for their, their medical license because they're not following the protocol, which is so sad. So, you know, really doctors, you know, I don't look at them as uh, the ones that are, are perpetrating this because they've been programmed and they've, they've, they're so highly invested in themselves and their practice. They don't know what else to do. And their hands are tied. (laughs) Yeah. Right. And their hands are tied. So they, they're basically are working for the man um, and so if they want to have their office and still maintain the type of living that they're, they're the lifestyle that they're living, they got to follow those instructions or else they can lose it all. Um, so I get it, but we as individuals have to start exerting our, our freedoms and that freedom means, uh, to start eating your right. And this should not be a political, uh, I, I would think regardless of what you have beside your name, whether you're a Republican a Democrat or independent. I would think that as humans, we all agree that health is very important and that we all three can say, look, we want people to have longevity, healthy uh, lives and, and, and benefit from what we're recommending. I would think that all three political groups could come together, at least agree on that. I mean, that's, that should be something that we all agree on. That should not be a political issue because someone's putting money, money in your pockets. Right. Right. Well, the, so, you know, the, really, it comes back to just knowledge. Like, you know, you have to you have to look after yourself and because nobody else is going to. And, uh, you know, like you mentioned before, I don't have health insurance. I don't have a doctor. Like back when I did have that stuff, it didn't work. I'd go to the doctor. <laughs> the doctor would tell me the bad advice and I'd go, I'm not doing that. It's like I. Like, I already know that that's not right. <laughs> so it's like, that was a waste of time and waste of money. And then, 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 then you see what the, you know, what they charge the insurance for some little, like a blood test or something. And it's like five times what you would pay if you just went on your own and paid for it. It's, it's like this big, just out of control machine that, that doesn't work. <laughs> All right. It's that time of the evening where we get a chance to check in with Mr. Brian Schenker of the Meat Tribe YouTube channel. Mr. Schenker, welcome back. And what kind of deals do we have this week? Thanks, guys. All right. Don't have a lot of deals for you this week. Um, first up, Food Lion. They have um, a deal going on through the 15th. They've got some choice grade boneless ribeye steaks for $7.99 per pound. And old. <laughs> yeah. And, and you'll be able to get those cut because it's boneless since your right. food line doesn't have a have a saw that can cut through bone. So um, really good price on that. And they will cut to your thickness preference there. Two inches. Um, <laughs> nice. And then they also have some corned beef brisket. I guess, uh, is that a St. Patrick's Day thing? Beef, uh, corned beef? Yeah, Absolutely. I think so. Uh, <laughs> yeah it's it's there a lot of stores have been having it on sale corned beef brisket for 3.99 per pound um aldi they have a deal through the 15th they also have some corned beef brisket for 3.99 per pound um kroger they've got some choice grade bone in t-bone steak family packs brian for 7.99 a pound and some uh choice grade chuck roast for 6.99 a pound not too bad, although we've seen chuck roast as low as three ninety nine recently. Yeah. So, and then Giant Eagle, they have some deals running through the sixteenth. Um, they've got some corned beef brisket for four ninety nine per pound. So, what is that? Is that four different stores that I just said with the corned beef brisket? One, I can't two. count. I can't count past three. So, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll defer to Brian. Uh, I, yeah, it is. <laughs> um, and they also have some T-bone and porterhouse steak value packs for ten ninety nine per pound, and um, and oh, they have two different corned beef briskets. I don't know what the difference is. Oh, one is a choice grade that they're selling for four ninety nine per pound, and the other one is certified Angus beef that they're selling for 
six ninety nine per pound. Um, so speaking of that, because Giant Eagle always has stuff labeled as certified Angus beef, and we could probably have Dennis on sometime. I, I kind of know what what that means, uh, but he's more of an expert. So maybe we could have him on again and talk about you know the USDA grades, the different grades, and and when you see certified Angus beef, what does that mean? I'd rather him him spill the beans on that than me. Yeah, we'll call 1-800-ASK-DENNIS. <laughs> uh, but other than that, that's all I got for you guys. Um, like I mentioned before we came on, Harris Teeter hadn't updated their website, and they're usually a big chunk of uh, – they've always got really great deals going on. So their IT people are slacking today. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure they're going to be adding uh, corned beef and cabbage to the uh, on sale because usually they pretty much give the cabbage away during this week leading into St. Patty's Day. So it is oh, a – yes. They, I mean, huh. It's like 25 cents a head. I mean, they, it goes crazy low. So I'll have to get, I'll have to get some. My wife makes, um, makes a cabbage dish with ham hocks mm. and, and onions and, and seasoning and – cooks it all day i don't really care for cabbage myself but if it's on sale for almost free can't pass that up no it's 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 i i probably have it once a year during the uh, corned beef and cabbage saint patty day month of march um other than that it's just it's, it's uh well to be truthful it gives me a lot of gas <laughs> so. <laughs> uh so let me ask you i never i've i don't think i've ever had corned beef or pastrami, anything like that. What does corned beef taste like? What can you compare it to anything, or or describe the seasoning, the flavor? Oh wow, I've had it. It's kind of it's just uh, well, it's brisket, but it's I guess it's prepared differently. It doesn't, you know, when you when you cook something on a smoker, it's just got this thing to it. According to me, like my just my experience with corned beef, it's like. Uh, well, drier. It's more like, you know, because they slice it. So it's more like lunch meat. It's not really, it doesn't excite me that much personally. <laughs> I think when you slow cook it in with the cabbage as a traditional uh, Irish day meal, I don't, know, it's a, I don't even think it's a really traditional Irish meal. I think the U.S. has made it a traditional uh, St. Patty's Day meal. But uh, I find it to be very good. I mean, I, mean, I it's not something I go to, but when I have it during this time of year, I, I tend to enjoy it. Um, I would I would say that it's uh, it's like you got to have the cabbage to go along with it because it's like having barbecue with no coleslaw. It's like the two go together. So if you want to experience the optimal taste and flavor of, of those two combined, you got to have the cabbage along with the corned beef. That's just my two cents. Well, I guess it's, okay. just, it's personal preference and taste and, you know, all that. So, so don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then, well, we will see you next Wednesday. I think that's right before St. Patty's Day. So we'll see you next Wednesday. And uh, All right, sound have a good week. Sounds good, guys. Take care. All right. We'll see you. Yeah. Bye. No, I'll give a, I don't, I think she'll be okay with me sharing this story. If not, she'll be busting through the door and hit me upside the head <laughs> jokingly. But anyway, um, Peggy's uh, issues with her basically, I will say IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, had flared back up, and she was really having to stay home for the last month. And and you know it was it was it was beginning to get very concerning because she pretty much is just a carnivore. She eats one meal a day. She doesn't take any. She doesn't take. I mean, she literally eats the more stricter diet than I do. Um, and she could not get over this nauseous feeling to the point where I said, listen, I said, I can tell you're, you're, you know, you're losing energy. I, do you want to go to the doctor? And she says, no, because I know if I go, they're going to make me put all the junk in my body that I know is not good for me. And I'm going to be worse. I'm not going to be better because of them. So I said, well, let's do this. Um, let's do a 72 hour fast. Let's reset your bio. Let's reset the gut let's do a 72 hour fast and we'll break the fast by having bone broth so during the 72 hours we're fasting we'll make our bone broth and then we'll make that as the foundation of rebuilding your gut and here's the cool thing so that's taking control of your health we did that we made the bone broth she did take the bone broth she was nauseous the day that she broke the fast 
but the next day afterwards she felt great and she's felt great ever since um, oh, so she just needed a reset it's like rebooting a, your rebooting the computer right and the bone broth being what your nutrients to sit there and, and help give your 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 uh your gut flora the the to be able to do what it, it it's meant to do, which is to protect you and to make you stronger. And so that's a great example. And it's what Brian said, you know, we could, it was getting to the point where I was like, well, I can't keep seeing you like this. We've got to do something. But she knew deep down going to a doctor was not the answer for her because we've been there before and they want to, the stuff they even want you to take. So they do the, the, the test is sugar, glucose and all this crap stuff. And mm -hmm. It just makes her sick. Um, and so, you know, let that be a lesson uh, for those out there watching this program. We do have the ability to go out there and reset ourselves. Um, so, you know, it can't be, it, it, we, we have to realize that we have the power to control the way we feel. And when we start taking that back from what we've been believed, uh, who we need to go to and turn to for our medical health. It's sad, but it's just the reality of life. And until we break free from this system, uh, as we were talking last week about the doctor that uh, Brian was talking about, we have to, uh, you know, we just have to take matters in our own hand, like Brian and myself and, and many others who have come to that conclusion. So anyway, since we're talking, let's change it up a little bit. So Brian, where's, uh, where are you heading off to? I know you guys kicks this plane on a West Coast a swing. So where are you guys playing this Friday and Saturday? Actually, it's Saturday and Sunday. Oh, Saturday and Sunday. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, normally it is Friday and Saturday, but uh, we're, we're in Las Vegas Saturday at the, what is it? Some kind of casino. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it just went out of my head. That's um, all right. Visit them all, everybody. You'll catch kicks somewhere. It's on it's on the website. And then Sunday we're uh, at the whiskey in Hollywood. So ah, yes, the good old whiskey. So well, anyway, if someone has been watching this show and you guys are still hanging with us, uh, what bit of advice would you give them, Brian, to increase their health, make their body stronger, and to boost their immune system? I would say eat your meat. And I would say that's great advice. Well, with that being said, we'll see you guys next week. In the meantime, stay safe, stay well, stay out of that hospital. We'll see ya. See ya.